In this RC circuit, the capacitor is initially uncharged. We then close the switch, find the current in each resistor and the charge in the capacitor immediately after the switch is closed and a long time later. When we close the switch, we make a change to the circuit. Immediately after the change is made, the charge on the capacitor is the same as before because it takes time to change the amount of charge on a capacitor. Since the capacitor is initially uncharged, immediately after the switch is closed, the charge on the capacitor is still zero. And since Q equals to CV, Q being zero means the voltage across the capacitor is also zero. This means we can pretend that the capacitor is like an ideal wire, just at this particular moment. And the circuit is like this one. We can pretend that the capacitor is like a wire because a wire allows charging current to flow. And since V equals to IR, with the ideal wire's resistance being zero, the potential difference across the wire is also zero, just like an uncharged capacitor. In this equivalent circuit, three and the left side six ohms are in parallel because they have one end together and the other end is also together. Similarly, the 12 ohms and the right side six ohms, they are in parallel. And the two sides, are in series. We can simplify this circuit by first finding the equivalent resistance on this side and the equivalent resistance on that side. On the left side, for resistors in parallel, 1 over R equivalent equals to 1 over 3 plus 1 over 6, which is 1 over 2. So the equivalent resistance is 2 ohms. For the right side, 1 over R equivalent is 1 over 12 plus 1 over 6, which is 1 fourth, which means the R equivalent is 4 ohms. So we can simplify the circuit to this one. In this circuit, we have 60 volts and 2 and 4 are in series, a total of 6 ohms. 60 volts divided by 6 ohms, we get 10 amps of current. First, the 2 ohms is really 3 ohms and 6 ohms in parallel. Since they are in parallel, they get the same voltage. They get the same voltage as their equivalent. So the voltage across the 2 ohms equals to the voltage across the 3 ohms and the 6 ohms. And to find the voltage across a resistor, we just do I times R. So it's 10 times 2, 20 volts. And we can do 3 ohms gets 20 volts, so the current is 20 divided by 3. The 6 ohms also gets 20 volts, so the current is 20 divided by 6. Similarly, the 4 ohms is really 12 and 6 in parallel, so they get the same voltage as their equivalent. So the voltage across the 4 ohms is the same as the voltage across the 12 ohms, and the same as the voltage across the 6 ohms on the right side. And the voltage across the resistor is I times R, so 10 times 4, 40 volts. Therefore, the current through the 12 ohms is V over R, 40 divided by 12. And this one is 40 divided by 6. And of course, we can simplify these numbers. How about a long time after the switch is closed? A long time after a change is made, the capacitor has either done charging or done discharging. There is no more charging or discharging current. So there is no more current in the capacitor segment. This means we can cut these wires and it won't affect anything because there is no current flowing through these wires anyway. With the wires cut, the circuit is equivalent to this one. So 3 and 12 are in series, 6 and 6 are in series. 
and these segments are in parallel with the 60 volt battery. So each segment gets the same voltage, 60 volts, 60 volts. 3 and 12, they get the same current because they are in series. And since they get 60 volts, the current will be 60 volts divided by their equivalent 3 plus 12. And this is uh, 4 amps. So the 3 ohms gets 4 amps, 12 ohms also gets 4 amps. Same here, 6 and 6, they are in series. They get the same current and uh, they also together get 60 volts and uh, 6 plus 6 and this is 5 amps. So this is 5 amps, 5 amps. As for Q, it equals to CV, so we have to find the voltage across the capacitor. Although cutting the wires does not affect anything, of course the capacitor is still connected here. Since the capacitor or the capacitor segment is not in parallel with anything, to find the voltage across the capacitor, we can use the partial loop rule. For example, I will call this point P and that point Q, and we want to find the delta V from P to Q. We can go from P to Q through this path or that path, or even a path like this one. It does not matter which path we use. We will arrive at the same answer. For this video, I will take this path. We know that the battery pushes current out of the positive terminal, and the current gets here and split into 4 amps and the 5 amps. So when I go from P to Q, this way against the current. So the potential increases by I times R, 5 times 6. When I go that way, I am going with the current. So the potential would decrease by I times R, 4 times 3. So I'm getting positive 18 volts. So the charge on the capacitor is 5 micro times 18 volts, and that is 90 microcoulombs. And because when I went from P to Q, the potential increased by 18 volts because delta V is positive, Q has a higher electric potential. That means the top plate is positively charged and the bottom plate is negatively charged. By the way, I'm calling it partial loop rule because we're not going around a closed loop. We're just using this method to find the change in electric potential when we go from one point to another. After the switch has been closed for a long time, now the switch is opened at t equals to zero. Find the current in each resistor and the charge on the capacitor immediately after and a long time later. Also write the charge on the capacitor as a function of time after the switch is opened and find the time when the charge on the capacitor drops to 50% of its initial value at t equals to zero. When we open the switch, we make a change to the circuit. Immediately after a change is made, the charge on the capacitor is the same as before because it takes time to change the amount of charge on a capacitor. Before we open the switch, the charge on the capacitor was 90 microcoulombs. So immediately after, the charge is still 90 microcoulombs. Since Q equals to CV and the capacitance is 5 microfarad, the voltage across the capacitor is 18 volts. With the switch open, the battery is disconnected and the capacitor discharges through these resistors. Since the top plate is positively charged and the bottom plate negatively charged, the discharging current goes up and then split to two sides. In this circuit, the same over here, 
three and six are in series, and twelve and the six are in series. And these three segments, they are in parallel with each other, so they all get the same voltage. And the capacitor gets eighteen volts. That means it's eighteen volts, eighteen volts. So three ohms in the left side six, they get the same current because they are in series. Eighteen volts divided by three plus six, two amps. And the twelve and the six on the right side, they get the same current. And they get eighteen volts and twelve plus six ohms. So this is a one amp. Now let's write the charge on the capacitor as a function of time. During this charge, the charge as a function of time is an exponential decay. So the charge as a function of time is e to the negative t over r c. And what goes here is the initial charge. In this case, the initial charge is 90 microcoulombs, so it's 90 times 10 to the negative 6. So times e to the negative t over this r. In this discharging circuit, there are multiple resistors, so we have to use the equivalent resistance. What is the equivalent resistance in this circuit? We have 3 and 6 in series, 12 and 6 in series, and together they are in parallel with each other. So 1 over equivalent resistance is 1 over these two in series, 3 plus 6, plus 1 over these two in series, 12 plus 6. And this will give us 1 over 9 plus 1 over 18, which is 1 over 6. So the equivalent resistance is 6 ohms. So the RC is 6 ohms times the capacitance, which is 5 microfarad, 5 times 10 to the negative 6. So if we simplify this, it will be 9 times 10 to the negative 5th times e to the negative t over 3 times 10 to the negative 5th. And this will be in coulombs. To find the time when the charge drops to 50% of its initial value, we can say Q as a function of time now is 50% of this value. So it will be 45 times 10 to the negative 6. And according to the equation, this equals to 9 times 10 to the negative 5th times e to the negative t over the time constant 3 times 10 to the negative 5th. And we are looking for t. If we divide by this on both sides, we get 50%. So one half equals to e to the negative t over 3 times 10 to the negative 5th. To solve for t first, we would take natural log on both sides. And natural log 1 half is negative 0.693. And then on this side, when we take natural log, we get negative t over 3 times 10 to the negative 5th. This will give us uh, t equals to 2.08 times 10 to the negative 5th seconds. How about a long time after the switch is opened? The capacitor would be completely discharged, so Q is zero. And there will be no more discharging current flowing through any of these resistors, so all of them are zero.